Well, so guys, I'm down here at Court McSherry Pier. Put this out. Down at Court McSherry Pier. I've been out fishing all day. Well, three quarters of the day, pollock fishing in the boat. The self-drive boat here. One of Mark Gannon's Court McSherry angling boats. Great sport, but it's high tide coinciding with late autumn, early winter type fishing. And there's a chance of a conger. I've got to go for it. I've been in the uh, lifeboat. I've had an early-ish meal. It's just seven o'clock, just gone. High tide's about seven. It's still pushing in here a bit. It's going to pour out. I'm going to catch nothing. I've got about, I reckon, no more than an hour, hour and a half tops to see if I can get a bite. I've got small mackerel and two small pollock like this out there. In fact, Congress, I don't know whether they're going to eat a lot of pollock. They probably do. There is the other half of the pollock. I've got one whole pollock, a couple of halves. Normally got got three rods out, two boat rods, and one is a a popping rod. What's called a popping rod, you know? Not even a rod, a rod. So the downside is, I've got the plus side there. Evening flood tide, high tide, spring tide coincided with darkness. Yes, you think that's brilliant. They've had loads of rain up in land and it's flooded down the river Bandon and it's brown water everywhere. Now, I honestly don't know with the conga, which I think will probably be resident on this pier, are going to bite in this fresh water that's coming down. The benefit being, the flood is coming in. So it's, there we go. I don't believe this. There we go. I don't believe it, guys. It is there. That is a hit. Very, very snaggy here. That was that was not crab. I'm gonna back this off. There's the bite. I'm gonna try and zoom in on the rod top for you. Look, 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 look. It's blurred, I know. There's the bite. Now, the thing is they come out their hidey hole, cracks in the in the wall and back inside it. Now, a fair chance he hasn't pulled off again. <laughs> Come go on, boys. It's a bootlace. Well, it's not just a bootlace, it's like a strap conger. And he's absolutely throated whatever it was I dropped down there. Quite a bit of weed there. That, guys, is for me a success. There you go. Not the size I'm after, it shows you they're down there. Where are we? I've only got one more bait left. So what I'm using is a hook, running trace, and something called a Stones, S-T-O-N-Z, purely because I thought it might, it's on a running ledger, sort of, sort of running ledger. It's a, um, they use them carp fishing, I think, but I thought being round, it's not gonna snag sea fishing, so it could be some new sea fishing thing, and also it's not got the density, like, I'm using some um, nuts on there. No, 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 no. Nuts are going to bolts. God, I can't trust you guys, can I? I've got my, I've got my three nuts on one, and weight on the other stone, and one of these stones on there, on the other one. Right, I think I've got one more bait. Let's just drop that down, see if I get lucky. Be nice to get a big one, but listen, it's a success in every fish you catch when you. I knew, I knew the tide was right, I just knew it, I thought I've got to do it. It's no good going, sitting inside. The weather's going to change, you've got to be there at the right time. And because this flood is uh, perhaps putting a little bit of clean water in the, in the estuary, they might come on the feed. Okay, so there's that slab, a 
pollock and put it through the top end, move the hook through, nick it about midway because you don't know which end the, the conger's going to go. I just want to go under the skin if I can. There. I, think I always put a cut in at the back so that that hook when I pull this trace like this, pulls down like that. And here, on the other end of the running ledger, is that stone, it's just a stone. Once the tie picks up, I won't be able to use it. There is actually something about fishing at night off a pier, late autumn, early winter, you, you generally don't know what you're going to catch. The wind's gone down, that could be the only take I get, but listen, it's the American saying, be there when they bite. I was there and luckily he bit. It's about bang on high water now. Probably won't get long before it turns. When it goes out, it's game over because the tide will rip through there, carrying weed and everything. So, if anything I could have possibly done would be out a little bit earlier. As for pier fishing tips, I can give you. I can I can show you this while I'm waiting for a take. You might want to go somewhere that's got some decent pier lighting like this up there. But I've obviously got a head torch and I've got a camera torch as well that goes on there. Check those rods. The reels and rods I'll show you in a second. Bearing in mind the tide gets an hour later each night, so tomorrow night it'll probably be eight o'clock before I get the same state of tide. This actually looks like it's turned already. Is they were unloading this boat here with this crane, and he was unloading loads and loads of crabs and I think it was lobsters and stuff. So they're constantly unloading fish here. And the other thing is, often they'll drop off fish and people here, which is where the steps are, as you can see, down there. Now, at the bottom of those steps, bear in mind the boat would go along here. I think I mentioned this in other shore conger films. The bottom of the steps gets a lot of propeller to and fro. So it's going to pull out all the bits of concrete and leave gaps for the conger to go in. So that's why I'm on that corner over there. If I just zoom in there. You can see exactly where I am fishing. One to the right, one straight down, and one cast up this way to the steps. And of course you can also, if you do get a big fish, you can get up to these steps and maybe get a chin gaff in or swing them up as well rather than take a strain on the rod. You can, you can get up to the steps there. I'd like to see another bite, I have to say. I've got one cast up here. I might, with a tie going this way now, I might actually drop a bait down there. All right, I think we're gonna do that now. That way, the smell is going from here, from that boat, down there, because I feel a conger would have come up here looking for scraps. So now I've got uh, two regular boat rods. But because I do, uh, or used to do quite a bit of shore conger fishing, don't do it so much now, obviously I can still do it, I've just done it, is with my boat rods, and again in my boat as well, I just paint some, uh, about a strip of about, <clears throat> I would say six inches, eight inches of the top two rings, just with white gloss paint. So if I'm in my boat, I can see rod bites at night. That's a rarity because I don't go out in the boat much at night. But here on the pier, I can also see those rod tops standing out. Now, my popping rod is very, very soft compared with the boat rods. I mean, it's a strong popping rod. Um, you can use it for tuna and stuff like that. But that one I haven't painted white, you know. I haven't got round to that yet. It's just a little tip, you know, if you're fishing in an area that's not well lit, you want to be able to get a rod top that you can pick up with your head torch like this. And that little bit of white, just this long, on the end of your rod top, 
can actually uh, be picked up with the head torch. The other thing you want to do, leave the reel out of gear with the clicker on. It's most important. We were here once <clears throat> about 40 years ago. A bunch of us fishing. Somebody forgot to put the reel in free, free spool. Whoosh, plop, over it goes. By pure chance, we all started casting with our lines. We managed to snag the rod and reel that went in the water. And I, I got a feeling, I seem to remember, the guy got the cong as well as his rod and reel back. So it's a double, double sweet, that one. Doesn't happen very often, though. Also, if you're using a fixed ball reel, I try and put it when I lay it down on the drag's loose, not free spool because it could backlash, tangle, and the conger takes the rod over. Not too tight because it could take the rod over. You want it just so you can just pull some line off under pressure without the tide or current pulling it out. But I put the reel on the ground with the reel knuckle of the bail arm resting on the ground so the spool itself. When it revolves, it's not exactly on the ground. It's not going to get catch on the gravel or on the concrete. Um, it's just my little way of doing it is if you put it on the knuckle of the reel bail, then you should be okay and the spool is then free to revolve. Am I going to get another bite? Well, I have had a good 40 minutes to an hour, I guess, the slack water. <clears throat> I could see by the big boats, the lifeboat, and the one out in the main channel, they've now turned round. But the wind is sort of westerly, it's blowing out the estuary, so that's going to turn them, even over slack water, it's going to turn them a bit on the tide. But they're now, what I call, sitting into the current. So I can see with the bubbles, it's going to start pulling now. So I guess I've got maybe 20 minutes left. No more takes, but the problem is I've got loads of crabs over the bait, so I haven't got that much bait. I've got no more bait, I've got what's in the water. But I'm never too worried about the crabs, because at the end of the day, they smother the bait, but the smell is still coming off that bait. And I think Mr Conger comes along, and he'll crunch all the crabs at the same time as he picks the bait up. Or the crabs are aware of the conger and suddenly part, you know, away from it, scuttle away, and he moves in and picks a bait up. But there does seem a hell of a lot of crabs. Yeah, it's definitely pulling now. I can see the bubbles down there just starting to move past the rod top. It won't take long, five, 10 minutes if that. Well, no more takes, so I think I'm going to call it quits for tonight. But of course, tomorrow night is an hour later. Eventually, it will respectively get an hour, an hour, an hour, and we're not staying up at 12 or 1 o'clock. So, pleased with that fish. Lucked out very early on. Hopefully, we got pictures of that one. Well, obviously, I'm going to know, because I'm going to be the one that edits the film. I might try and pop down tomorrow night, and it's going to be about 45 minutes later but then I think I could have done with getting there a little bit earlier because that conger took straight away. So fingers crossed, I'll get back here. Time to pack up. All the Looney Tunes are coming out now, so I think it's a safe time to depart from a pier. Well, I did tell you I'd be back, and I am indeed back. Yes. Got my extra rod this time. A little bit light for this type of fishing, but it's worth a go. 
and I've got some decent mackerel this time. Got some frozen mackerel off Mark up at Wood Point. I'm going to drop those down. I'm a little bit early on the tide. I've been in the lifeboat, had a beer, had a meal, and thought, well, I'd be okay. I was a bit panicky that I'd miss the tide. It appears I might not have. It's still pouring in, but it's sort of circulating, if it makes sense around here. So I'm going to drop a couple of baits up there. And hopefully, these stones, which I'm using for weights, will actually anchor it in position. Let's get it down there. Noticeably colder tonight. It's supposed to be good weather tomorrow. But I've got here, if you can see, a great big chunk of mackerel. Going to go through the throat latch, out the other side, it's a head. Pull it right through, just nick it under the skin. Put a little cut at the back there. Just so, if you can see that, the hook point sticks up proud there. Going to drop that down and that is something that the, crowd, the old crabs will have a bit of a go at. Might take them a while to get through a head, that's why heads are such a good bait for conger I feel. I've been out in the self-drive dinghies that Mark does here and I've cracking down the pollock so I've got some mackerel left over and there's only one good place to put it and that's the end of Court McSherry Pier. There's barely a zephyr of wind tonight, so it's just a beautiful night to be out conga fishing. So these rods might be a bit light, but Gonna give them a try, one's a popping rod. The other one's just my pike rod, to be honest. I'll tell you what, if I get a cong rod, it's gonna bend, that's for certain. And the fish, because of this circulation effect here, I'm gonna cast two up here, and I'm gonna fish other baits down here. So generally, I like it when it's slack tied and the smell of the bait goes to the left, but the moment it's coming to the right, which would take it towards that base of the steps where I told you on the previous trip about. Let's get these up some fresh baits. Let's go feed the crabs. Now should I get anything of consequential size that I can't swing up on the leader? And there's every chance here, this is some big fish. I've got one of these, which is a Mustad 7731, uh, about a 12-0 marlin hook. It's called a Sea Demon, it's straight, so it's in line with the shank. There's n the barbs being ground off, and you can just chin gaff a fish and I've got it on a pole with a grip here and obviously a safety piece of rubber over the point there just in case I get a leviathan it's there the other thing you need if a fish does swallow the hook I've got a good pair of uh, well, my sharking cutters for cutting wire so it snipped through the heavy duty mono I've got here no problem but it's pouring past at the moment maybe I got the tide wrong I thought it would be about 45 minutes later it's not it's a good bit later, but we'll see what happens anyway. At least the baits are fishing, that's the main thing, they are fishing, they're on the bottom. It is a magnificent, windless evening, it's bizarre. Summer, yes. Early winter? I think not. If this is global warming, <laughs> I'll go through the whole winter like this. You see the difference between the painted rod top? It's only gloss paint, and I'm one on the right which has no paint at all. It doesn't need to be luminous, doesn't need to be reflective tape. Just makes it easier 
I just seen any twitches and tweaks from bites. Well, I get a bit colder now. It's bang on high water. I haven't had a touch at all. I've just used another whole mackerel, cut it into four, sent the baits out there. I've seen a big shoal of mackerel, two shoals of mackerel, bait balls go past, swimming yeah, relatively quickly, um, but I can't be bothered to get a spinner out for them. So nothing up the other end, nothing here. Absolutely, you could drop a feather tonight. It's so still, it's unbelievable. Very, very quiet and eerie. You'd think there would be conger out tonight. I really would have thought there'd be out. But it's slack out there now. And I reckon another 15 minutes of tide will turn. I'll give it, say, another 15 after that, and then I'll call it quits. Might have to go shore fishing somewhere else, try and catch you guys something. I'm amazed with good bait like this. High tide, in the dark. <laughs> Couldn't ask for better, really, for conger. So you can see down there, the water's getting clearer. If I zoom in, hopefully you'll be able to see this. About there, it's what, five, one, two, three, four, about five, six steps. It's clear now that I can see down through there. So the water is getting clearer, and as I say, I've seen a couple of shoals of mackerel, little bait balls go past. Got about a 30 minute warning here. I don't think you're going to be able to see that bait ball there, guys. Oh, yeah, you can see him. You see all that bait coming right past. They're actually not mackerel. You can see those. It's a massive, I think it's a massive shoal of mullet. Yeah, they should go right past. There you should be able to see them. There. Big bait ball. Now if that was, if that was uh, Florida Keys, it'd be tarpon and Jack Ravels smashing into them. Still something to see. Well, tonight looks like being a bust. I haven't had one pull. The tide's come in. Load of rubbish coming down now. So I think the best thing I can do is pull in cut my losses and maybe find somewhere else to catch a fish for you guys. So lucky last night with that first conger, but tonight which I had it as perfect, isn't. It's the way it is. At least I'm out there doing it, or trying to do it. No, it's pouring past now. I'm gonna wind in. There must be something wrong guys, I'm back for a third night. <sighs> Gotta be worth a try, that's three nights consecutively on a row after doing a full day's fishing at sea in boats. Go down the local takeaway, the local being an 18 mile round trip to Clonakilty to get a takeaway to stay surviving for another 24 hours or 12 hours till brekkie tomorrow, cornflakes and toast. It's the way it is, you've got to put it in. Listen, it is a fabulous evening. Today out on the boat was unbelievably flat. So it's a beautiful evening, but it was last night and I got not one bite. I'm down again, I've got some uh, good baits. Cubes and chunks of mackerel, heads of mackerel, tails of mackerel. I've got my rods down. Hopefully, I'm gonna get a take, but all I can say is I am at least here. We've got a couple of light rods down there. You can see just down there. Lord and no one knows what I'm going to uh, what I'm going to do if I fish on those two. One's a popping rod, one's a pike fishing rod. Pike rod, well, poor old the old white rod is going to suffer terribly if I got a 10, 12, 15 pound conger on it, or bigger because they are here. 
and I've got boat water down the other end. So I've got to give it an hour. I think the tide is just, just starting to slow. I am possibly a little bit early, but it's, a, it's an hour sitting in the, in the bedroom looking at four walls or an hour out here. And I'll tell you which one I'm going to choose exactly out here. Evenings like this with the winter looming are too good to turn down, even if I do blank. Well, this is going to be the uh, last session I'm going to have here. I've picked up the two rods from here, which should be my normal hot spot. And where this boat's moored is out, I think, pretty much every day. And I've seen them wheeling stuff over here to the uh, loading truck, the free, like, freezer truck, you know. So look, his decks are wet. Tells you one thing. All this is wet here. Well, his boxes have been craned up on that tractor. I think we filmed earlier so I've moved the rod up here thinking all the rubbish that's fallen off in there might attract them and I've done one just upstream because the currents go in this way at the moment I've put the white rod back up there just trying to keep thinking because look there's all this commercial gear as you can see there hopefully you can see it in this uh, amazing amazing lighting look at that lot my goodness me they know how to light a place up over here look it's like Manchester United Football Stadium. Glad I don't pay the electric bill. Do they run 24-7? I suppose they do. Think how much I could save if they just put one of those out. So that's the theory, guys. I'm standing where it's all wet, where the boat's been unloaded, and that's where any spillage goes in. Shellfish, stuff like that, rubbish, detritus, leftovers, whatever. We'll see what happens anyway. Because I can see the other two easily down there. And there's the world famous Lady Louise. Hopefully, I'm out on that tomorrow. Let's hope it's as flat as this. Well, guys, absolutely nothing has happened. The tide has turned very, very quickly tonight, which I find strange. But whether that's because the wind's gone around to the north and it's pushing the, uh, the tide out quicker, I don't know. Because before, it didn't turn as quickly as this, but they've gone right round. The weed's starting to come through. So, five minute warning, I think I'm off to bed. I'm out in the boat tomorrow, and that'll be the last session I have here. Because the tides are getting an hour later each night, that means you've got to start till 11, then 12, then 1. And even I can't fish that long. Not long after doing a boat all day. So give it a go. But I have got a half a day when I've got to make the run to the ferry to go home. So I might try and pop out somewhere, see if I can catch a fish to go with this one, and sort of finish a trip off. Still nice to be out there. Oh, oh no. Two ticks of the reel, but it is a bunch of weed on it. At least you know. GP doesn't give up easily. Right, well, tonight, been boat fishing all day. Again, fairly exhausted. Not going to go conga fishing, the tides are all wrong. So I've driven about 20 minutes to the other side of the peninsula to a gobsmackingly beautiful place which I have bass fished before. The tide's all wrong, it's low tide, I've got no choice. Dunwally Beach, one of the top bass areas off the rocks anyway. I've no idea what it's like for surf fishing, so check that out. Westerly should get a good sunset, the sea is flat. Chances of catching something is fairly uh, slim or zero because A, it's flat and B, it's low tide. Well, I'm just gonna have a walk along and see what I can find. As I say, I can't even remember how I got down there. Surely I didn't walk across there and get cut off a tide. So I'm going to climb up here and have a look. Lovely soft dunes at the top here. Wowie. Don't go too close to the edge, Graham. I think last time I fished over there, fairly sure of that. It is at least clear, and what a panoramic vista 
facing west. Tides on the flood. I might get lucky and see if I can find a way in here. And check out that down there. That is, oh, makes my stomach go a bit peculiar. Mind you, the burger added Colonna Kilton to make my stomach go a bit peculiar the other night. Whew. Best place for me. <laughs> Best place to be is in the open air. So I soon have found my way down to the rock area as the tide comes over here. I think I fished that gully there. That's where I think I fished last time. Hopefully, carefully and without falling as my mobile phone is not taking any signals. So I've got to look after myself. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's here. Amazing all these rock formations sticking up jagged like this. Let's hope I don't slip. You remember that gully coming up in there, I think? A lot higher water. You can see my lure's going straight in the kelp. And as I hold it up high and just sort of speed wind it across the surface. That's the only chance I've got. I don't imagine there's any bass in here yet. So good chance I'm going to feed my lures into oblivion here. Got lots of little sort of pea mussels here, you can see. They get covered over at high tide. A few limpets. But what a stunning location. That is what we call Grunchy Ground. There's a nice gully here, look at this. Going back up in here, I wonder if high water bass come up inside that gully through that channel. That's deep down there, wow. That is deep. I've got a little spinner I might drop down there first, actually. I think I've got to try the spinner first, which I can afford to lose. Gonna get about an hour, that's all I'm gonna get here. You know what? An hour blanking in a place like this, it's not a problem, is it? <laughs> Third drop down, something flashed out, foul hooked in the belly. A little pollock on, on that spinner there. He saved the blank, but he so should never have flashed at that lure. I bet a bass would have that in a flash. Just literally dropping it down in that, that gully there, which is deeper than you think, which will probably claim this lure in a minute. Ah, small pollock anyway. I'm trying to get under that ledge. All right, let's get out on the peninsula. Fire the old spinner. I don't think there's any mackerel around. No one seems to be catching them at all. It casts like a missile, but it also sinks like a missile. So I'm just trying to keep it up high, off the surface, rod held high, spinning it fast. The deeper I go, which is where I want to go for the fish, is where the kelp is. You never know, something might flash out and grab it. That's like that, the weed, exactly. I got it back, that was lucky. Now I think there's a deep pool here, if I remember. It's going to fall to let it sort of dally about and dance up and down a little bit. Absolutely stunning vista. Wait till the sun pops through there if it comes through. And that's Galley Head over there. We were out skate fishing today out here. Long way out obviously, but from compared with where we are at the moment. But what a setting. Bit of a swell coming in there. Some guys on the pier I met this morning were saying uh, they've been getting a couple of bass or something night fishing with hard plastic lures around this side. I'm getting weeds, but I've got pretty strong top off from the braid I've got on the rear. I've topped off, I think, with 30 pounds or 25, so I've got a bit of a chance of getting it back. I'll get snagged. 
I'm going to switch off now, people, until such time as I go home, see the sun come out, or catch a fish. Ooh, here goes number two. As the sun comes out, hooked in the ear this time. Just a small miniature pollock there. Beautiful colours, aren't they? They live in the kelp, that's why they go that gold colour. But they're obviously uh, coming out for the lure. I just had a third small pollock. So, there's a chance. And the deeper the water gets, as the tide comes in, obviously the slower I can then retrieve keep it in the kill zone a little bit longer the moment I've got to sort of skip it over the top of the kelp and the weeds and snags which is not ideal but that's the only chance I've got and I'm going into Clonakilty and try and get something to eat because everywhere stops serving food god knows when about July I should think look at that look at that sun coming out there look at it my goodness There's some setting. Oh, kelp. Does make you jump when you just wind for a while with no takes, or no takes, no pulls from weed or whatever, and then get it pulled round. Keeps the adrenaline going. It's got to stop fishing for this. Just watch when the wave comes over here how you get all the gold coming up there where the sun's come out. It's like burnished gold shining there. That is amazing. What a sight, especially putting this in the picture as well. So just check out that sunset there, guys. I'll tell you what, if I've got enough battery left, I'm going to save some because very often like the tropics those clouds are going to light up tonight trust me brilliant red generally 20 minutes or so after the sun has set well I did tell you what would happen about 20 minutes the baseline of cloud has stopped a lot of it but you can see up there the sun's lit all the cloud up you normally just get that in the tropics but uh, last night was fabulous tonight it's like you get even better and it's going to climb way way up in the sky here all those white clouds are going to turn uh, pinky red beautiful do you know what i might not have caught a bass but this setting makes up for it i think i'm going to go and get something to eat in clonakilty a cheapo pizza followed by a pint of probably guinness i guess or murphy's down in the lifeboat in Cormac.